Hey guys, it's Adam again. I uh, just want to touch base with you guys real quick. Yes, this is exactly where we left off last week. Uh, so I, again, I do apologize for last week, cutting it kind of right in the middle of stuff. Uh, but I wanted to make make this last a little bit longer and not give you guys another hour episode that you may or may not even watch anyways. So I want to kind of cut this down and keep it to my 30-minute time slot like I'm supposed to. Yes, I know most of my videos have been primarily uploaded, so ultimately the time frame doesn't really matter because I'm not bleeding into anybody's live time. But still, wanted to do that. So yes, this is picking up where we left off with Rob Just Rob uh, from the Minecraft server LibertarianGaming.org. Uh, just another regular Joe who's sitting there just wanting to tell you his story and just kind of just talk through things a little bit. It's always good to get the general idea from someone who's just like us. Uh, so and not, you know, one of the big, big wigs uh, in the libertarian community. Not that those people are any kind of problem. It's just it's just good to get the everyday person every once in a while. So, without any further ado, we will pick this up where I left off. Uh, so, I want to kind of change gears here a little bit. Um... You know, we all kind of have our specialties. I kind of like to just talk generalities on, on the free market and, you know, my envisionings of how things can work. Uh, and, you know, you probably have your own focus. Do you like to talk more foreign policy? Do you like the more general aspects of things? Or is there a tech side or, you know, a gaming side? Uh, you know, where do you find yourself really locking in arguments against statists? You know, I, I don't really um, I don't really do much in foreign policy. I mean, when people start talking foreign policy, I don't get involved because I'm not even going to lie. I'm not very knowledgeable about that stuff. I, one, I don't have that much time to de dedicate to independent research. Um, there are a few issues like um, the military. That is a very hot issue with me. Um, and just a lot of general talk, you know, like um, – you know, you, you like I said, you know, you hang around online, and you get a lot of the um, a lot of the the people from you know that were like us a couple years ago. They're just starting out. They're not really sure how things work. They're just you know they're curious. They're they're doing more than most people. They're trying to learn, and I like talking to them and making things sound good for them, and you know trying to convince them because one of my other you know this and this actually ties into one of the other things that I um really am very adamant about as far as speaking and talking to status is um i call them asshole anarchists the very angry anarchists who when an, when a statist or even like a minarchist which you know technically i guess could be considered somewhat of a status you know they start talking and you know these there are a lot of anarchists i'm not gonna lie they, they really aggravate me when they just start saying oh well you're a fucking statist you know you're a piece of shit and you know why don't you call your big daddy uh, Barack to, to fix all your problems for you? You know, oh, God, I'm about to get started on this here. <laughs> um, talking to people like an asshole is not going to get them to listen to you. Anyone listening to this, if you are talking to somebody, if someone was if you were talking to somebody and they and they were trying to convince you of something, if they started a sentence with you're a fucking idiot or you're stupid for believing this or why your idea is so dumb. Are you going to listen to them? No, you're not. You're going to immediately write off everything they have to say and you're just going to ignore them till they stop talking. And there are very famous anarchists in the well famous in the liberty community who have um I wouldn't say a cult following but a very large following. I'm not going to mention names but we know who they are. And yeah, I would consider them some of the angrier anarchists and that may work for them but i think pragmatically you know when you when you think about how practical it is to talk to people you know they you know i've heard anarchists say um you know we're awake and if people are too stupid to you know um see what's going on right in front of them you know we shouldn't want them on our side here's the problem with that while people, while the, while while we we can claim to be the more upstanding people, we can claim to have the moral high ground. The pr problem is, the we are the vast minority. The super majority of people need to be convinced, and they can only be convinced through logical arguments, not through calling them names, not through making fun of them, not through being, you know, complete jackasses. If you want to convince people, you know. Try and relate to them. That's what I do. 
when I talk to people, you know, I, I see on, you know, there's all kinds of forums, all kinds of groups on Facebook. There's all kinds of everything where you can go and talk to people. And I see every single day, every single freaking day, you have an, a state, you know, a, a statist or even like a minarchist asking a question. And it's, they're not doing it to troll you. They're, they're doing it because maybe they have a question. And even if they are trolling, don't take that risk that they might be, you know, answer their question. And they say, oh, well, you know, you guys are assholes. And I always put, you know, I'm not them. They don't speak for me. You know, state your question. You know, I'll, I'll talk to you about it. And I've had many good discussions about this. I've actually, you know, even managed to convince, like, one of my coworkers. Like, he – I have one coworker. He's from New Hampshire. And as we all know, New Hampshire is the home of the Free State Project. He knows who the Free Staters are. He knows – he actually grew up just down the road from where Porkfest is held every year. Um he had he has some very good ideas, but he's he was a little confused. I started talking to him earlier this year. He you know he he thinks you know he thinks a lot like libertarians do. But if he would have gone online, odds are he would have just been you know ridiculed and almost shunned by them by by the majority of the anarchists that exist on the internet. Because uh, you know it's something that um, I actually learned from um, my friend Julia. She uh, she calls it shitting in the pool. It's when a small group of people are the ones that ruin it for everybody. And I didn't want him to be turned off to it. You know, if I in my head in my mind, if I can even convince one person to even you know if I can plant even a seed in their mind, that's that's a win. You know, they can they'll, they'll go home, they'll start thinking, and you know, hey, maybe maybe in a few years they'll finally be you know. They'll finally know, you know, that the whole system that they've been taught their whole life is nothing more than a giant flaming piece of shit. <laughs> right. And, you know, the, you, you bring up the interesting conversation point of the asshole anarchist, as you call him. Uh, yes. Yeah. And it's it's one of those just kind of fun things I'm, I'm realizing. You know, I try to go and be the sensible person and I'll have to kind of divert away from you a little bit because go ahead. Um, I disagree that logic and evidence is what's going to convince people. I think when it comes to the more rabid statists, the people who think the Papa government's going to do everything for them, <laughs> yeah. I think what we really need to do is hit their emotional side first. Yeah, Make yeah, them well, understand the moral arguments first, and then bring in the reason and evidence, and then they'll go, aha, okay. Yeah, yeah that, that's my point. I mean, like, just the other day, I, like, I mean, this is two days ago, me, I had, I was looking at a forum i do a lot of like skulking on forums i don't really like to get involved unless necessary the they were discussing lincoln and you know to most americans lincoln was the greatest thing to happen to this country since sliced bread you know he you know he's obviously famous for quote unquote freeing the slaves and reuniting the union blah 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 he's also most famous for uh you know murder dinner theater yeah zing <laughs> too soon man too soon <laughs> so, sorry hey, anyways keep going it's okay anyway you know i told you know everybody like he had like five people on him and they were all just saying you know you're an asshole and i stepped in and i said hey you know let me you know i said let me try i said you know i'm not like these other people here let, let me see what i can do and you know, he said he you know, he said, oh, but you know, Lincoln freed the slaves. What he you know he cared about you know preserving the a slave free union. And what I did is I said, look, I don't want to be the guy to uh, you know tell you that everything you you've been taught about Lincoln is um, a lie. I said it, some of it is true. I said, but Lincoln wasn't quite the uh, quote you know the quote unquote flower child that you think he is or was. He did not give a shit. I said. And here's why. And I, I provided good sources, you know, historical evidence. You know, he didn't care so much about freeing the slaves as people think. He, he didn't – the only thing he cared about was preserving this empire. Well, so, you know, it wasn't an empire then, but I don't think. But all he cared about was keeping the whole country as one, you know, contiguous country. He didn't really care so much about the people. And he had brought up the Emancipation Proclamation, you know, one of the one of the most famous documents in history. Um, and I had said, well, here's the problem with the Emancipation Proclamation. It didn't free all the slaves. I said, all it did was it freed the ones in quote unquote, um, what the hell was it? Um, in like, well, I'm, okay, I'm not going to quote it because I can't remember it, but it, it only freed the slaves in problematic areas. That way, 
those slaves, I mean, come on, if someone was was holding you as a slave, you'd want to get back at them. Because, so, he freed them so they would join the army. Because at the point that, at the time it was passed, you know, the Union Army was suffering pretty badly. I told him, you know, the, the the proclamation was more of a political stunt. It was, it was. I mean, I'll give Lincoln credit. It was a genius move on his part. It weakened the South and increased the Union Army size all at the same time. And to most people, because, you know, I, I like to think that people aren't weren't as um, dumb to American politics as they were today, or as they are today back then, but... I think to most Americans back then, it made him look like a good guy. They're like, oh, look, he freed the slaves. How awesome. You know, this guy's great. But that's all we're taught. We're not taught the whole story. And I, I was talking to this guy and I told him, you know, this is, you know, there is historical evidence. I mean, in his own words, he said he would have. If he could preserve the Union without freeing a single slave, he would. He said he would do whatever was best for the Union, regardless of how it would affect the people. And by the end of it, this guy was like, you know, maybe I should really look into this some more. And I haven't, you know, it's the Internet. That guy, I'll probably never talk to him again. But the fact that he was able to admit, you know, in a public forum, hey, you know, maybe I'm not. You know, maybe maybe I'm not right. Maybe I should you know, look into it more. That makes me feel really good because, you know, a few years ago I was a I wasn't a status. I didn't I was very indifferent towards the government, but I uh, I didn't really have the knowledge or you know foresight to say you know to try and convince people of another way. So when I can do that, I feel really great about it. And you know, it it, it just it seems to me that being you know, like you said, hit you know, hit them, hit their emotional side, then bring in the facts. That that's a that's a good point. You know, you got you gotta you gotta kind of break their perception of what rea- of reality without coming off like a complete asshole, because it's just not gonna work. I mean, like I said, you're not gonna if someone called you an asshole the moment you met them, you're not gonna listen to what they say. You're just gonna appease them till they shut up and go away. <laughs> Right, it's it's one of those interesting things, you know. I myself, I I got myself doused with some shock therapy of sorts. Uh, I was, you know, doing a high school project, mm-hmm. and we were told to go and look into candidates who weren't the the big two for the presidential election. So mm-hmm. obviously, I decided to go the route of uh, the one great Dr. Paul, and I happened to be just taking a break on YouTube while I was doing that project, and guess what? Screaming Texan I found with his great documentary. Uh, I think it was Endgame at that point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I Ow. cost him Alex Jones. That was my jumping in point. Uh, yeah. Which is just I, kind of really kind of fucked up when I think about it now. But uh, he, I've never been a, I've never been an Alex Jones fan. I mean, he has some good things to say, but I, I he's he just isn't my taste. Well, he's also you know minarchist. Not even yeah. minarchist. He's kind of paleo conservative, but that's neither here nor there. Whatever the hell that means. Yeah. It's, I love I love I love all of these these. Uh, these hyphenated political affiliations, they just crack me up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all just the same state worship at, at various levels. It's just a matter of yeah. how much, you, you know, you deep throat the state. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, put that on a fucking T-shirt. Uh, well, but in, in all seriousness, though, it's – I think people – some people need the shock therapy. Some people need to be told that, you know – hey, the government is trying to kill you or the government is trying to spy on you. The government has no care for you. And others just want to know, you know, maybe what a free market could do about things. Even just two or three incidents of, you know, hey, the market can do this, the market can do that. Look at what government's doing and look at what, look at what the market's doing. And that's enough for some people. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm always torn. I like to kind of be a little bit more brass and, you know, go kind of more – punch it in your face sort of way but i also yeah. want to be just as gentle as possible when i can i mean i don't know it's, it's one of those interesting balances i don't know if i'm ever going to perfect it uh yeah so. well it's it's actually kind of bizarre like listening like if, if you were if if you didn't know who i was which i'm not really anybody in the liberty movement like you said i'm not one of the big guys i'm just some guy you know i i just i'm just a, i'm just like any other guy i'm 25 years old i have a job i have a life you know i'm i just also happen to be an anarchist and i um god i just lost my train of thought completely 
Go ahead. I don't know what I was going to say next. <laughs> well, you're, you're making the point uh, about, you know, I just talked about oh, you know, how I, I'm not sure of my balance. That's it. In in person, like, you can ask anyone, all my coworkers, my friends. I am a very loud, in-your-face person. I, I like to have fun and be just borderline obnoxious. I like to have fun. And, and things that are fun to me may not be fun for other people. But at the same time, it, it is hard for me to sometimes – like back up from that and enter more like a, a, you know, more, uh, more docile, I guess, way of writing and, you know, or talking and, you know, to try and approach a conversation carefully rather than just saying, you know, what I really want to say, you know, like some, there are some times where I just want to like, where someone says something so outrageous, I just want to say, what the fuck? That is so goddamn stupid. But you can't, you know, I don't do that because I don't think it'll help. And I know not everyone's the same. And I'm, you know, maybe, maybe, it, you know, like I said, it's worked for some libertarians being, you know, loud and in your face. But for me, that doesn't work. Right. And, you know, I guess my next question for you would be then, uh, you know, you, you talk about the, the Free Talk Live and a, and a few other outlets. If you mm -hmm. had to have... Let's just say four sources of information. Could be video, could be audio, uh, could be you know reading stuff. What four mm -hmm. sources would you recommend to uh, you know maybe new anarchists or people who are minarchists who are you know just curious about the ideas? Wow, that's that's definitely not. I was not expecting that question. I, I honestly have no idea. I I don't think I could narrow it down because you know. Anarchists are such a variety of people. Like I was just saying a few minutes ago, there's so many hyphenated titles, even in anarchists. Like when I became one, I thought it was just that's it. But even since then, I've learned, you know, there's anarcho capitalism, anarcho communism, anarchists without adjectives, anarcho whatever else, you know? It's, I, I don't know. I mean, personally, I subscribe to the anarcho capitalist ideas. That's just me. But I don't think I could actually just narrow it down to four sources of information to learn more about it. I mean, I really wish I could, cause I'd love to give, you know, your listeners something to, you know, go look, go research for themselves. But I, I would just, you know, I would just say, look around the online. There's a, there's a lot of forums. There's a lot of, you know, places where people talk about it openly. And even Facebook has some good groups that, you know, you know, we have, we like to have fun in those groups. Like there's one group I'm in and there's over a thousand people in it, but we just like to have fun. And you know, when a, when a status comes in, we like to, you know, some people like to be jackasses. I like to talk to them and you know, people learn and I'm not going to lie. I've had my own like uh, moral dilemmas about being an anarchist and I post it there and we really get into very deep philosophical discussions on, you know, the free state versus the government you, or not free state. Wow, that's an oxymoron. The free market <laughs> versus the government. We and, all know um, what you meant. <laughs> yeah. So you know, ver I, I I I just I can't answer your question because I just cannot narrow it down. That's all. But I guess I'll ask the question. Uh, do you think libertariangaming.org is a uh, a good way to jump in a little bit if you want to just kind of have a fun, laid back gaming experience where it's eighty percent, ninety percent, you know, let's get shit done in the game, and then you know, ten percent of it is cracking government jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's funny because um, it, it's so weird. I play on other servers on Minecraft. I play a lot of games. You know, if you guys haven't checked it out, I'm not, I'm I'm totally about to drop this. Try out Diamond Defender. It's a lot of fun, and you got it's uh it's it's really it's a good time. But I do like playing with with LibertarianGaming.org's audience. I mean, there's our the server is it's a great server. Uh, you know. Stets and uh, V and I'm not going to use names, but you know, on the page, Stets and VVL, they work very hard to to keep it, you know, keep it up. They 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 really work work on it to make it a very enjoyable experience for us. And yeah, like you said, 90% of the time it's work, work, work. I mean, me and you, like you said, we've been on plenty of Nether adventures. Um, we, we've had we've had a lot of fun in that game. And yeah, the a lot of the time we or sometimes we we start cracking go jokes about government, making fun of things. I mean, just the other day. You know how you know you know where my house is in that in on the server. I demolished it, and because I'm building a new one, you'll see it. It's awesome. Um, and one of the one of the players, uh, his name is Fag. He came up to me and he's like, "Excuse me, do you have a permit for all this construction?" <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I I was it was so much fun. I mean, 
<laughs> say what you will say what you will about anarchists, but they, they, we like to have fun just as much as anyone else. It's just our humor is usually rooted in, you know, government is stupid as shit, and we just like making fun of it. It's it's so much fun. If you, I mean, really, I know you already said it to your listeners, but really, if you guys have not checked out the libertariangaming.org Minecraft server, that's the game that I mostly play. It's so much fun. And you guys really need to join. And you better hurry because it's an ANCAP server and land is going fast. <laughs> yeah, it's – oh, God, it's just so crazy. I mean, I've – you you were part of the – well, you didn't help me build too much. But you, you helped me with my whole process of my new house and it's uh, all the shenanigans that went into that. Uh, yeah. You were the yeah. first case of walrus aids. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, which, by the way, I I did find that 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 quote cocaine in my <laughs> that you left me. That was amazing, man. That was I, that was it was so much fun because I was reorganizing my all of my inventory. I was compacting. I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> so yeah. I find a I find a chest full of cake, and then there's all of a sudden cocaine in there. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> so yeah, this is just even half, not even half of the fun things that you can do on the server. Now, granted, it's not a big multiplayer like arena type. There's always no, something going no, on. It, it, half the time, it's, it's just, just two or three people on at any point in time. Sometimes. No. And, there's I'm not even, I mean, it's just me usually. I mean, yeah. I've I've been on there 10, 12 hours at a time, and not a soul has been on there. Yeah. I spent so much time on that server, and and I'm there's no one else on there as much as me. And it's it's just straight up mining and crafting. It's survival. It's fun. And you know, if anyone wants to try it, you know, come on down. It's you know, it's full of really nice people. You know, we all help each other out. It's funny because I'm an anarcho-capitalist in real life, but I, I am slightly socialist, communist in that game, where I just like to give shit away. You know, I mean. <laughs> Me and you, we routinely drop off stuff at each other's houses, you know, whether it's, like, you left me cake and drugs, and, you know, I'm leaving you, like, enchanted bows and all kinds of stuff, just wherever you, wherever I find something. Then you let me take poisonous potatoes to help infect everybody else with walrus Oh, aids. yeah, that's that's always fun. Yeah, by the way, there's, I got some more. They're, uh, they're sitting in that chest there by my farm. You can just go and grab them if you want. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, so in all seriousness, but... Yeah, in order to join the the Minecraft server, uh, make sure you message or email the guys at LibertarianGaming.org or are over at the Facebook page. I'm an admin over there. I don't have any whitelisting powers on the Minecraft server, uh, but I can push the issue. All you got to do is uh, name drop your uh, your username for Minecraft, and we'll whitelist you, and then we'll send you a message with a new IP, uh, and then you'll be good to go. Just join on in. Uh, you know, you'll see Robert. Almost yeah. all the time. Uh, yeah. and I'm in periodically, and we do silly bullshit. Uh, yeah. But it's it's, it's a load you, of fun. If you join, Chan, you, there is no way someone cannot join that server and will not see me within three days. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just impossible. So do you have uh, – I will kind of round out the show here. Do you have any outlets that you really uh, like to you know talk from, produce from? Are there any forums that you really hang out on? Or is it really just the Minecraft stuff that – uh, it, you know, people can get I, to know it, you. As weird as it is, I really, it's just a Minecraft, you know, I, I really, Minecraft is, it's a, I'm very passionate about playing it, and even though it is a game, I have, you know, like you, I've met a lot of really cool people on here, you know, and I've learned a lot from the page, um, you know, not only is libertariangaming.org a gaming website, but it's also a, an anarchist and libertarian blog, and you know, they post a lot of really edgy and compelling articles over there about, you know, not just gaming, but any libertarian or anarchist issue. And it's it's a good place to learn. I guess that could be one of the four places. I've, I've read a lot there. Um, oh, and actually, I did just think of another one. Um, when I was at Porkfest this year, I met a very nice man. His name is Joe Jarvis. He runs a blog, uh, Vigilant, Vigilant Vote, I'm pretty sure it is. He um he runs it's oh no it's Joe Jarvis explains it all it's just him he's um I don't I don't know if he's an anarchist I really wouldn't know what to call him but he uh it, it's just a blog about his personal life and how anarchism ties into or how his his liberty ideas tie into it and it's a lot of fun you know it's it's he writes he's very articulate and he's a very you know he presents a lot of good cases for it. So if, you know, if anyone wants to learn something from just a regular Joe, no pun intended, <laughs> Joe Jarvis explains it all or Vigilant Vote would be great blogs. They're both his. It's just one's more about his personal life. One's more about his other stuff. Yeah, and we'll, then we'll put that in the description bar below. Certainly. Uh, yes. 
And then um, another place where I've actually, and this is amazing that I've learned as much as I have from it. Another another podcast that I actually have learned quite a lot from is a is called uh, Puke and the Gang. It's um it's a they call they call themselves Grumpy Young Men. It's a show about grumpy young men complaining about everything, but. It's a show about basically four libertarians living their life and having it completely fucked up by the government. And it's just fun, you know, like they talk about things that they're doing. They, they you know, they drink beer and they, they talk, you know, they just discuss everything. And it's it's a lot of fun. But a lot of the, you know, if, if you go back into the history, I think there's like something about 140. 60 episodes now they've talked a lot about a lot of stuff they talked about lgbt issues they've talked about you know ex uh i know that at one point they were talking about expa- expatriating and they've talked about gun rights they've talked about you know concealed carry versus open carry you know in new hampshire you can open carry um but like here in florida you can i mean getting a concealed carry is like a herculean task yeah you can I, barely carry a stick running around much less a, a gun <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Like they they talk about everything, and it, it's it's a really fun time because you know you, we all listen to. I'm sure that most of your listeners listen to libertarian podcasts of, in some iteration or another. This one, it, it's a it's a good re, you know comic relief while still getting that same message. So it really for me, t- you know, because like I'm like I said, I'm a fun person. For me, it was a good way to really learn a lot and. It, it, it did help me kind of jump off the cliff, so to speak. All right, very good. So, all right, we're going to wrap the show up here. Uh, do you have any final statements, any last one-liners or any kind of – anything you want to plug? S- yeah, I don't want to sound too cliche. Just I, I don't have any personal blog or website. I'm, uh, I actually jokingly earned the title at Porkfest this year, the worst libertarian ever for not <laughs> – <laughs> uh-huh. Yes, you can thank my friends Joe and Nicole for that one. Nice. <laughs> But um, I'm, I, I don't have a show. I've been on other shows. I've been on, you know, Peace News Now with Derek J. Freeman and uh, Freedom Fiends and, you know, Puke in the Gang, too. But I, I don't have anything of my own. Just if I if I had one final statement, it would be just keep an open mind, you know, try and really connect with people when you talk to them. Because remember, you we may we can claim moral superiority, but it is the super it's the super minority of or it's a super majority of people who don't agree that will control your life until you can, until they convince until they're convinced otherwise right and that i think that's a great note to end on uh, so we're gonna wrap this up this is adam brought of liberation Office republic high with the great rob just rob on the minecraft server <laughs> we'll be signing out saying peace and love and liberty and uh Go and give some peace some chance. You know, you don't you don't really need to have a gun in the back of every transaction. So we'll catch you guys next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, who knows? Maybe we'll have Rob back next. Uh, you know, in a couple of weeks if uh, you guys I, like I it. So on. anytime, anytime you want to have me, just let me know. I would love to be on to talk about whatever you want, whatever you got. Very good. So uh, thanks a lot, Rob, and we will catch you on the flip side. See you guys. Thank, thank you. <laughs>